If you carefully look at these radiographs uh, on the frontal and oblique radiographs, there is a linear lucency involving the scaphoid waist, suggestive of an undisplaced fracture. The scaphoid is the most commonly fractured bone, and typically the fracture occurs after fall of an fall on an outstretched hand. Approximately 65% fractures are at the waist, uh, so again the waist is the most common site for fracture. Non-displaced or minimally displaced fractures can be difficult to pick up on radiographs and if there's clinical suspicion for a fracture, usually follow-up radiographs in 10 to 14 days uh, are suggested. Now uh, the key point about scaphoid fractures is uh, uh, these are prone to avascular necrosis uh, as compared to any other fracture elsewhere. Uh, so this is unique uh, to the scaphoid because of its blood supply. Uh, so what happens is that the proximal pole of the scaphoid, uh, that's the larger pole, uh, is uh, supplied by a dorsal branch of the radial artery that enters from the distal aspect of the scaphoid. So when there's a waist fracture, that artery gets interrupted and uh, there is resultant avascular necrosis of the proximal pole. The, this can be radiographically occult. Uh, you may see some sclerosis in the initial stages, but they may need MRI for diagnosing that. The distal pole is supplied by a different artery, so that remains, uh, uh, so there's no avascular necrosis for that. Finally, the treatment, incomplete scaphoid fractures uh, uh, are usually treated by casting, uh, while complex or unstable fractures with ligamentous tears and carpal instability are fixed with operative repair.